U.S. Senator Bob Menendez is poised to blame his wife during his upcoming federal corruption trial. According to newly unsealed documents in the case, Menendez may point the finger at his spouse, Nadine Menendez, for bribery charges the couple is facing by claiming she hid information from him that led him to believe they weren't doing anything illegal. The couple is accused of accepting cash, gold bars, and other bribes in exchange for using Menendez's political influence. The bomb Bombshell revelation was contained in just two sentences of an unredacted court filing, reading, quote, while these explanations will tend to exonerate Senator Menendez by demonstrating the absence of any improper intent on Senator Menendez's part, they may inculpate Nadine by demonstrating the ways in which she withheld information from Senator Menendez or otherwise led him to believe that nothing unlawful was taking place. Legal experts say that tactic could protect the senator and, because of a rule known as spousal privilege, also his wife. Here to explain how is Brian Whistler, an attorney and former federal prosecutor who has experience with this strategy. Brian Whistler, thanks so much for coming on the show. So explain to me how this strategy works in a way that would both exonerate the senator but potentially also benefit his wife. I'm, I'm unclear on that. Yeah, I mean, I think in, in the first instance, the, the approach by the senator is is one that um, uh, is, is, like one would say, creative and certainly is uh, uh, borrowing from a, a playbook in a recent case involving a government, Governor McDonnell from uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia, who, mm. who took a similar uh, strategy in his corruption trial. And... Um, Unfortunately, it wasn't successful, but it was this, a very similar strategy. So this would rely on Senator Menendez taking the stand. Uh, if he does, he could share conversations he had with his wife that would prove he didn't know that there was anything illegal going on or he was unaware of any wrongdoing. Wouldn't that then essentially, uh, I mean, cast the blame on her? Well, it certainly it certainly would, and um, it's it's a it's obviously a tactic that's designed to not only exonerate him, but hopefully uh, to minimize uh, the exposure that she might ultimately receive. I think part of the thinking may be that juries um, tend to be more sympathetic to spouses. She's not the political figure. Um, she follows his lead for the most part. Uh, so perhaps it would result in a benefit to both, as, as you suggested. Um, of course, in my view, uh, jurors are, are generally pretty savvy, and um, they can surmise that this, in fact, might be uh, a, a ploy to design you know, to, to achieve a successful outcome for both, when, in fact, the evidence may not necessarily point that way. Well, so what changes now that it appears they're going to have separate trials? If the senator takes a stand, which we know it's it's been rare that defendants uh, take the stand in, in their cases, but if he does, can that evidence then be used in Nadine Menendez's trial, or does spousal privilege negate that? No, yeah, well, he he would be waving uh, waving that if he takes the stand uh, and describes uh, various communications that are that are occurring between uh, the two spouses. And it's the only viable way from an evidentiary standpoint that that evidence could come in um, in support of his defense that he did not have sufficient state of mind, uh, whereas she did. It seems almost strange, I guess, that we've had such a look into what seems like will be the defense's uh, playbook going into this trial. Is that typical? And the fact that these details were included in that court document, albeit they were sealed, uh, is it typical for them to lay out these tactics in that way? So in order for the court to properly rule on the defense motion to sever the trials, uh, the defense has to offer a substantial basis uh, to support that motion, a factual basis, that is. And that's that's what was, was done here. Of course, it's a very high-level uh, summary of the anticipated defense should uh, the senator take the stand in his own defense. 
Uh, but there has to be a factual basis in order for the court to properly rule on the motion. So is there a way that they use this tactic and uh, they come out unscathed and keep the marriage intact? It seems like fingers are going to be pointed. I think it's a live possibility, but uh, one can imagine that it's, it is quite a challenging defense to mount. Again, given the prominence of the lead defendant, uh, that he was the one that was, you know, engaging with these uh, various business partners, uh, as alleged. She was the beneficiary, it seemed, of um, the benefits that were conferred as a result of those arrangements, as alleged in the indictment. It's it's just significantly challenging, I think, for a juror to look at this and conclude that the spouse, the non-political spouse in this case, uh, was the mastermind or the driver of, of the scheme. Now, look, it, it, it all depends on the evidence at the at the end of the day, right? But I was at the McDonald trial. I represented the uh, cabinet members and the and the staff, the senior staff. I saw this theory advanced, and it was done very elaborately uh, to separate, to create a wide gulf between the two spouses, and it just. It, it just was not successful. And I think partly because there was uh, the, you know, juxtaposition between the, the two spouses uh, led the, the jury to conclude that, that the governor certainly had knowledge of, of what was alleged. Brian Whistler is an attorney and a former federal prosecutor. Brian, thanks as always for your insight. Great to speak with you. Have a great rest of your day.